Hello everyone, this is Simple Math for you. And today's lesson is two dimensional representations of three dimensional figures. أهلا بكم في Simple Math for you. ودرسنا اليوم هو تمثيل الأشكال ثلاثية الأبعاد إلى أشكال ثنائية. As if you are opening the shape, this is one of the parts, or you can represent the shape from the top, front, view, and the right side, left side of the object. This kind of two-dimensional views is called orthographic drawing. Orthographic drawing is uh, one of the ways to represent uh, the, the objects into 2D. Let's see here, uh, how can we choose the corresponding model? Which model corresponds to the orthographic drawing? Now we have four models, A, B, C, D, and uh, a top view, left view, front view, right view are uh, drawn actually for uh, these objects. So let's see which one matches here. If you look at A, for example, how can we imagine that we are looking from the top? If you look at the top, then you push this up because you are looking from far top, you imagine like this, and this as well, and this as well. You will see this, yes. But if you look from the right, so the top view matches here. But if you look at the right of uh, this shape, I don't think it matches, because when you look carefully here, the right side, push this and that into the same plane, you will have five, one, two, three, four, five bricks or five blocks, one, two, three, four, five. While here we have uh, four only. Let's see D, for example. If you look at D, look at the top view, push this on one plane, and it could be for the plane one, la mustaba wahad. And these red lines actually shows that this was moved. This block was moved. It's not in the same plane. It was not in the same plane. مش ما كان على نفس المستوى. إحنا رفعنا حتى نعرف نرسم. لأن من بعيد راح يبين على نفس المستوى. Okay. يعني imagine yourself looking at the building from the top. You will not notice that there will be a box over here and the box over there. You will see all of them on one plane. It's the same idea here. So D will match with the top view. Yeah. Let's see the uh, right view. The right view here. If you look at the right view here, you will see that we have one, two, three, four. Yes. And there is a movement here because you are shifting all these to that side so that you are drawing it. So we will put a red line here. Also, we have here. Sorry, we have here. Let's uh, put a red line here. So we have a red line here to indicate that this will be moved and also we will put a red line here because this will be moved to be in the same plane of that one. And we will have one, two, three, four, five bricks, and this matches with that. In general, the left view is a reflection of the right view. And we will not consider any movement as if it's a solid, rigid one. Okay, what about the front view? Front view is this one. Look at the front view here. You will imagine that everything will be shifted to that side. And we will have to move this and we will show that with the red line. We need to show this movement over here and it is matching with what we have here. So the best match for uh, this orthographic drawing is D. Bravo. Then moving here, make an orthographic drawing for figure shown. Write a letter of the drawing that represent the correct one. So let's see here the top view. Which one matches with the top view? Let's take a look. Okay, we can see that C and H both represent one, two, three blocks, but H does not show that there is any movement in the uh, blocks. So this should be red line, and this is shown here. So C matches with the top view. Okay. Left view, left view, left will be the reflection of right, so we will go to the right first better, go to the right view. For the right view, we have one, two, three blocks, and we have one, two here, but, but, and this is similar to, as you see here, 
uh, for the uh, right one, the right one, it's G can match because you are moving this here. And we can see as well, uh, I think, uh, B. But B doesn't show any movement. So the matching one will be G. Because this has been uh, moved or shifted to the front so that you can draw it. And this uh, represent that this was not in the same plane. OK, what about the left view? The left view, we said that it is a reflection of the right view without any movement. So this will be E, E here. Last thing is the front view, and front uh, view is clear for us. Everything is shown. Let's see the front view. Front view, we have one, two here, and we have one, two, three, uh, which matches with the D, so here one also. Three, so three, three, six. So it matches with that one since we have a movement here and movement there. So it matches with D as well. With that, we are done with the orthographic drawing. And here we are going to represent the three dimensional figures with nets. Actually, uh, the nets allow us to see all the surfaces of the three dimensional figure in a two dimensional drawing. And it's a two dimensional figure that forms the surface of three dimensional object when folded or unfolded, actually. So if you unfold, yani if you open the 3D, it will be like this. Imagine you are uh, going to package something or to pack it. It will be open and then you will uh, close it again. So let's go back to what we have done in the previous lesson. If you think about it here, which solid can represent this net or can be represented by this net? If you see here, we have a certain area base, a square base, eight by eight, and we have the triangles. So it reminds us of a pyramid. So it will not be this at all, nor that one. So it will be a pyramid, definitely either A or D. What is the surface area of this pyramid? Uh, the surface area actually can be found by two approaches. Either you can uh, represent the pyramid as we have done before and apply the surface area of the pyramid, or you can find the area of one triangle and multiply by four since we have four triangles plus the area of this square. So we'll divide this as composite shape. So we will first find the area, area of the square, which is the base. Area of the square is the side length square. In our case, it is eight, so eight square is 64. Good, now area of the triangle. Let's take the triangle aside here. This is the, our triangle. We have isosceles triangle, we have 10, 10, and the base here is eight. To find the, the height, of the triangle because the area of the triangle, area of the triangle is what? Base times height over two. We have the base, but we don't have the height, this one. So what will we do? Since this is isosceles, this will be four and this will be four. So we can extract this alone. Or we can take this alone, small triangle. And this will be our four. This is 10 and this is H that we are going to find. Then we can apply Pythagorean theorem. What does Pythagorean theorem says? It says that hypotenuse square is one of the legs square plus another leg square. Or we can say C square is A square plus B square, where C is the hypotenuse and this is A, this is B. If you apply it here, then 10 square is H square plus four square. So 100 is H squared plus 16. H squared is 100 minus 16. So H squared 100 minus 16 is 84. So H is the square root of 84. And it will be 2 radical 21. By the way, the height here, this height, would represent the slant height of the pyramid if you want to apply the formula, because this is the pyramid. So this height is the L. It's not the height, original height of the uh, shape itself. The height itself is this one from the vertex to the middle of the base. But the slant height is the height of the triangle, one of the triangles. 
So we are done with the height here. Going back to the formula here. So the area of the triangle is base, which is eight. Height, which is uh, two radical 21 over two. Two goes with two, so it is eight radical 21. So area of the square is 64. Area of a triangle is eight radical 21. Now area of four triangles will be four times eight radical 21, which is 32 radical 21. We have four triangles. So the total area will be the sum of 64 area of the square plus 32 radical 21, which is area of uh, all the triangles. And this is the answer. And we have D as our final answer, of course. Yes, don't convert to decimal. Okay, here, identify the platonic solid that is represented by the net. Actually here, this net, uh, it, uh, actually, if you open it, you will find that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. If you count them, there will be 20 equilateral triangles. And this means it's one of the platonic surfaces that we have studied in last lesson. And that means it's isosahedron, isosahedron. So what is this platonic solid? Is it a prism? Is it a prism? Of course it's not a prism. For any prism, if you remember, any prism will have rectangular, rectangular faces. Even if, uh, even if the base is pentagon or hexagon or whatever, the, the, the faces should be rectangular. So it's not a pentagonal prism. Actually, if you count, have six pentagonal shapes here or polygons, and here we have six as well, and all are regular pentagons. So it is dodecahedron because the total is 12 congruent pentagons. Okay, here, draw a net for the hexagonal pyramid. This is a very easy. Uh, actually, uh, example, start with the base, draw a hexagon, regular regular hexagon, put the dimensions, put all the marks that shows that it's regular hexagon. Then from each leg, draw a triangle that in our case is uh, looks like isosceles. So this is 13 centimeter and we have the same here. It will look like a star. So here. You can draw it much better than mine, actually. So this will be like a star and this will be five centimeter each. Let's draw a net for the regular pentagon prism. Same thing here. You can, by the way, we will not have a unique uh, net. We can draw it in many ways. If you open this shape, you will find rectangles. Actually, a rectangle. One rectangle, you can say here, connected to many rectangles. Five rectangles, because we have five faces. Take one of the uh, when the sides of the rectangle and draw your pentagon. And here you go, same thing. Sorry, here. Okay. You you need to try to be specific, but Yani, we will try to be accurate, but we cannot since we are not using our ruler, but uh, this can be made much better, of course, but I'm just sketching. Now, each side here is 15 centimeters. Each length is 12 centimeters. Of course, we can put this pentagon here or here attached to this rectangle or the other rectangle. You are free to put it wherever you like. OK, let's now try to draw a net to represent this three-dimensional shape. 
We will try by the base. Actually, the base is a rectangle, so it's very clear. I try to draw a rectangle here and put the dimensions. The dimensions are five by seven. This is the base of the tent. Now we have here this part which can be drawn something like this. As if you are opening the tent. Okay. And the dimensions are five feet each, and this is four. And also the one at the bottom is the same thing. What else we have? We have this face, this face, and the opposite one. So we will draw it. I will use another color. So I will draw a rectangle here because it is attached from this side and that side. And this will be four as well. And this is five. It's already there. OK, then only we are left with the uh, top. This I mean this part. It's highlighted here. We have here. This part and similar part there. So I will draw it here. And this will be five foot here and there. So we are ending up with this net. Okay, very good. And the last question is the checking of gift trapping. Draw a net to represent a three dimensional figure that can be used to model the gift box. So the best thing in my opinion is to draw a square the base is the square, four by four, four inches, and it is attached to triangles. Here, a triangle, or first a small rectangle, as you see this one. And then we have a triangle. Then you need to put the dimensions. This is one inch. OK, uh, this is one inch. What else? Four inches each side. Of the triangle. It's an easy lesson. It's uh, it depends all on your imagination. Thank you. See you in the next lesson. Goodbye.